Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are in the Exiled Lands, in map square H10, building a Black Ice Stronghold, a small fortress for an evil lord and his undead soldiers. This video uses mods quite a bit in construction and decoration, and the full list of mods and their loador can be seen, as usual, in the pinned comment below. As usual, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. You can get 68% off a two year deal plus a month free, when you visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt or use code eradyt at checkout. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about how to browse the internet safely and securely with NordVPN. So, seeing as this is indeed a speed build, let's get right into it. As with all my usual speed builds, I'll be talking through my ideas and inspirations for this build, along with my conceptual ideas and any difficulties I encountered during construction before then doing a final walkthrough of the finished build in the furnishing phase. I recently built a Black Eyes castle using the maculations from the Glass Constructions and More mod, which was a pretty good build at least in my opinion. I wanted to use the mod again to create something interesting, basically I just need an excuse to play around with this mod some more, but I didn't want to simply build another castle as I felt it be too similar though I did feel that the maculations obviously best fit a castle sort of build, and it's definitely designed for something stronger than just a house. Therefore, I today chose to build a black ice stronghold, something smaller than a castle, and more purpose designed for combat as opposed to being a fortified place to live. This desire to create a small stronghold to experiment more with the maculation pieces resulted in what is actually a fairly small build, especially in terms of the actual habitable area inside the central keep. Therefore, I had to work out a way to get around the severe lack of room and to incorporate a reason for there being such living space into the lore of this build, which is something I actually managed to incorporate into quite a dark, intimidating and even somewhat scary build, but we'll touch on that a little bit more later. Construction-wise, I went through a couple of different potential designs before reaching the one I eventually stuck with. I created a large rectangular base plate with circular corners, which I'll later turn into, of course, towers, and I then built another platform on top of this base plate, extending over just about half of the base plate, maybe a little more, and across the rear towers. I then made the start on the walls, which I partially integrated into the keep itself, which in retrospect, this might not have been the best idea, as the stronghold does feel a little bit lacklustre in terms of defence on the side. So if I was to do this again, I would probably build a similar wall that's on the front, around the sides, and then maybe somehow merge it into a thicker, more fortified back onto the keep. I created a small yard between the keep and the front wall, and then ran walls back to integrate them into the wall of the keep itself, creating small balcony-style platforms on either side of the main gate. I then built up the main keep itself, focusing on a tall, symmetrical design that utilises verticality, catwalks and glass walls to create a keep that is not only tall and impressive, but also stays connected to the harsh environment of the frozen north through the large windows. During construction, I did have to stop and think a few times about how I actually wanted to lay out the rooms within this build, as I was well aware that what I was working with was actually very little in terms of actual habitable room, and the design I initially thought of was going to cut down on that room even more. I thought a couple of times about expanding the build or sacrificing valuable social space for staff and soldier bedrooms. However, I instead built a dark and imposing fortress that serves as the home for one evil lord and his undead hive-minded soldiers. These soldiers need no sleep or sustenance, getting around the previous issue, and thus the fortress can be much smaller and much better defended by these monstrous soldiers.
decoration wise I wanted to go for something dark, intimidating and a touch of the occult for this build. Therefore I included a lot of macabre decorations including skeletons and corpses along with some intriguing yet unsettling statues around the build. Along with the ominous statues of death and strange horned men around the build, the master bedroom holds a particularly troubling statue of what can only be described as an eldritch monstrosity. I lit the build fairly sparsely, aiming for a comfortable amount of light, yet still allowing the darkness of the build to take holds in the corners and add into the oppressive and grim atmosphere of the stronghold. It's rare that I go for a horror theme in builds that I don't specifically go in and designate as horror builds, but being able to incorporate these darker themes into a build I didn't initially intend to be this dark is a nice aspect to this design. I'm personally a big horror fan myself, especially Lovecraftian horror, so I tried to capture that otherworldly feeling with some of the decoration choices in this build, though I am still searching for the perfect opportunity to create a build that is truly Lovecraftian. So I think that's about all I have to say for the construction phase. As usual, I will let the rest of the construction roll and I'll return for the furnishing phase where we'll walk through the finished build. Don't forget, you can get 68% of a 2 year deal plus a month free when you visit nordvpn.org slash eredyt or use code eredyt at checkout. Enjoy the rest of the construction and I will see you in the furnishing phase.
finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to, of course, furnish. Approaching the build, I've lit the stronghold with hanging and wall braziers, and decorated the build thoroughly with impaled corpses, dark, mysterious statues, sanguis banners, and of course those undead soldiers I mentioned earlier, standing to attention and ready to serve their master. The front wall is of a decent height, and is packed full of machiolations, to allow those undead soldiers to pour boiling oil down on anyone foolish enough to attack the stronghold. Entering the keep, the main hall is a dark and intricate place, packed with soldiers, statues and various trophies of the dead. There is plenty of room here, though the Dark Lord of the Stronghold is indeed the only resident, making the build feel somewhat strange as it's dark and imposing, yet slightly lonely. Heading upstairs through the tower, we reach the first floor. This floor looks down onto the main hall and includes two side workshops. The first is for more traditional metals and hides, with the second being a small library and alchemy workshop where strange, otherworldly materials are mixed together to create lost and forbidden potions.
Heading up to the second floor, we reach the Lord's bedroom. This is a large, daunting room, flanked by storage items and with a large bed in the centre of the room, presided over by a statue of the Great Dreamer himself. The Lord's bedroom is connected to the balcony surrounding the floor, along with both towers, which stand tall above the stronghold and provide impressive views across the landscape. And there we have it, a Black Ice Stronghold in the Exiled Lands, in Map Square H10. Thanks for watching, I basically just wanted an excuse to experiment with the maculation pieces again, and whilst I don't think this build is my most impressive in terms of architecture, I'm really happy with the decoration and the lore of this build, as it's been a good while since the last time I created a build with a dark theme. As I mentioned earlier, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. If you want to stay safe on the internet and ensure you can't be tracked by shady individuals, or whilst being able to access Netflix, BBC iPlayer, ITV, Hulu, HBO and more regardless of where you live, all whilst maintaining blazing fast internet speeds, NordVPN is the perfect choice for you. When you use my link or discount code you can get 68% off a 2 year deal, which comes out to $3.71 a month, an absolute bargain price for such a great service that I use almost every day. The software is a small download and it's easy to use one click and you're both connected and protected, and you have full access to the internet. Nord also has very strict policies on protecting your data, meaning you can browse in confidence. Visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt or use code eradyt at checkout to claim this huge discount and get the best VPN service available on the internet, and also help me out a lot at the same time. As always, thanks to Nord for sponsoring the video. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like and let me know in the comments below if you have any build suggestions for future videos. As usual, absolutely anything is welcome. Don't forget to both follow me on Twitch and join the fun on our Discord through the links in the description. Again, don't forget you can get 68% off NordVPN when you use code ERADYT at checkout or you can go through my affiliate link in the description and pinned comment below. YouTube is currently my full-time source of income. So if you enjoy the content and would like to help support the channel so I can continue to put out the best content possible, do consider becoming a patron. There are multiple tiers of support from $1 to $20, offering many different benefits from a mention in every video to Discord roles, and even sneak peeks of every new video before anyone else. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so if you'd like to support the channel feel free to consider becoming a patron. On that note, a thanks to our current patrons Sammy, Sodialot, Randar, MK Pantheon, Sergeant Swede and Shannara. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel. There are new Cone Nexiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be the first to see the next video, 
and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.